Hi everyone, I'm Hong Lei and this is Machine Learning for the Absolute Beginner. Today we'll touch a different key topic in machine learning, eigenvector and eigenvalue. So what are they? Let's get started. Let's take a look in these famous paintings. What we have is we uh, will want to move a point on this painting a little bit to the right, every single point. Now when we do that, as you can see, the red vectors that point to this particular point has to change direction so that it continuously point to that point. However, if the point is on the blue line, okay, in the directions of the blue vectors, changing the data to the, to the right does not change the directions of the vectors. So, to make this more concrete, let's take a look into an example. We have a matrix multiplied by vectors. At the end of that conclusion, you will have the exact same vectors along with a scalar. So, to present it in the coordinate system, you have a unit vectors 1, 0. Um, it's going to be changed into uh, vectors 3, negative 2. And the unit vectors 0, 1 is point to uh, 2, 7. Okay? Uh, once we do that, however, there's a vector that does not change directions. When we we move them to the new coordinate system and that and this is the vector 1 1 so what does it mean let denote these informations the matrix is a the vector as x five as lambda and this is the same vectors we're going to say that lambda is the eigenvalue of matrix a and x is the eigenvector associated with eigenvalue lambda in formula expression we have matrix A multiplied by eigenvector X equal to eigenvalue lambda multiplied by eigenvector X. So now when people talk to you about linear transformations, immediately you will think about eigenvalue and eigenvectors. Let's call L the linear operator mapping a vector space V to itself. We express L of V equal to lambda V. So we can think of the operations on these vectors is multiplied by a matrix A. So here are some applications. When you multiply an n by n matrix with another n by n matrix with itself, it will take you normally n to the power of 3 operations. But with the known, if we know the eigenvector, it's going to be a simple power of the lambda multiplied by the vector. So a lot more simplified. Now, the bigger eigenvalues will correlate with more important directions. Let's revisit some of the topics you learned in class about PCA. PCA is principal component analysis. What we need is we need a, a matrix. And this matrix will give us some vectors as directions of the new data. So we have a data plot here in two-dimensional space. We will be able to draw a vector called an eigenvector across this data and then another vector is a functional to itself to it because we need to be able to present every single point that discuss the attribute value of x1 and the value of the feature x2 into this new coordinate systems. So what it means is that we need to know the covariant matrix which is going to discuss the relationship between each of these features of this point to other features. Okay? And then um, that means the eigenvectors of this covariant matrix will give us directions of the new axis, and we call this principal components. So what PCA gives us is, first of all, a measure of how each variable is associated with one another via the, the calculations of covariant matrix we also know the directions of the new axis, which is the directions in which data are dispersed, and the relative importance of these direct, different directions because, as we mentioned in the previous slide, the more important uh, eigenvector, the higher its eigenvalue. So that's all I have for today. Looking forward to talk to you more. Have a good day. Bye.